Yeah, I mean, so wrapping up now and thinking about people and how you laid out and and taught us so much about NFTs, what do you see is the future? Where are we going with uh, NFTs and uh, where is the digital Where's the digital art form? Where, where do you think it's headed? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, it's so complicated now. And, and you know, NFTs really got a bad rap and, and, and rightfully so, because there was a lot of speculation, a lot of, you know, just trying to like make money. And so I think we're going to go into NFT 2.0. And, and one thing that I want the audience to know is that word is so complicated and nobody likes that word. So you really, we can call it a digital asset, you know, or just digital art that has, you know, a trackable, you know, protection around it. And so, so what I say is like, it's, it's just a digital asset. So when you think of cryptocurrency, just think of digital money. And when you think of an NFT, just think of a, a digital artwork or digital asset that's got, you know, protection on it. But it, it's, I, I think that we're going to see some larger artists, perfect example at the Museum of Modern Art in New York, um, Rafiq Anandal um, is creating, he's got an AI generated art. The AI is, is trained on all of the art in the museum. So it's not stealing from anywhere that was not, you know, planned or okay. But when you go there, you get an NFT of that artwork. And it's really more of a proof of um, attendance. And so a lot of times, so you get a proof of attendance that, you know, on January 1st of 2023, you went and went to the museum and you saw that piece of artwork. Um, so I think we're going to start to see these very unique uses. The, the, the other thing that I haven't really talked about is that the, the NFT or, you know, the code around the, the, uh, digital artwork can have programming of all sorts, like this can't ever be resold. Or when this gets resold, you know, the original owner gets 10%. That's sort of the generational wealth kind of thing, ad infinitum. Or that this piece of art, you know, can't be sold more than a certain number of times or whatever it might be. Or or that you could even make it where it's geolocated and it can only be sold when it's in this part of the world or this city or something like that. So that art form of being able to have this programmatic component is super fascinating. Um, new kinds of art forms like, you know, maybe you buy a particular NFT and I buy a particular NFT and we decide to combine them and somehow do a collaboration. So you, we're seeing that where people um, buy different parts of an NFT and then they merge them together. So it's, just, it's like a collaborative game. There's so many new art forms that are coming up that are just sort of mind bending in a, in a way. So I think we're going into a next stage, but, but the artificial intelligence that can pump out amazing art quite quickly has got me a little um, confused. And I think we're gonna start to, but, but again, I feel that it is similar to the you know photography it's a new tool we're we're going to see where what people create and you know the real question is like where do you draw the line between something that i just spit out very quickly that doesn't that doesn't need an nft and doesn't need to be protected you know from cop being copied and that needs to be monetized versus something that i've spent some real time and energy on and i need to protect that yeah, so lots lots to sort out. I know that you're also an expert on the metaverse and uh, extended reality, virtual reality, augmented reality. It, it just seems like there's so many things right now that are kind of on the table. It, it's really it, it's really bizarre trying to figure out where it could all go. It, it really is um, a pretty wide open space right now as far as creativity and what comes next. Yeah. I mean, you know, because I, I deal in virtual worlds a lot and I start to see that world building and building new worlds is one of the art forms that we're going to really see explode, which is, um, you know, 3D virtual worlds that you know you create a whole world that's that is not just 
the painting, but walking into the painting. And then that things can happen in that space. So I think we're, we're I mean, we're seeing that happen now. And that's really exciting. And I think I've heard you in a, in a previous presentation talk about the NFTs and how we're doing it right now. Like you can have in you know, something like Second Life or or some type of uh, emerging extended reality, you can buy fashion and you it's not just art. It's it's a way to protect uh, creativity. And I, I like what you said. It's, uh, you know, at what level is creativity kind of happenstance and too common to really be merchant, you know, marketable or um, monetized? And at what level... Do we say that, yeah, that's something really special and there's training and things that went into that and we need to protect that? Yeah, you know, it's it's very interesting because the the older the younger you are, the more your life is spent, you know, in in digital worlds. And and I'm not an advocate that we all spend time only in digital worlds, but we spend half of our time in digital worlds. And I think we probably will continue. So the younger you are, if you play video games and you have an avatar, I mean, you know, you woke up and put on those glasses that you have, you put on your shirt that you have, you put, you bought that painting that you have. So, so all the kids in the virtual worlds, they're doing that constantly. And that stuff has meaning to them and took time and, and it cost Robux or, you know, um, some, so they've spent time working on their avatars and working on their clothing, and they're going to continue to want to buy digital assets for that world. And that's, uh, you know, it doesn't make sense. The older a person is, or the less person spent in, in those worlds doesn't make sense, but you talk to kids and it makes a lot of sense to them. Absolutely. Well, as we, uh, wrap up is there anything that i didn't i didn't mention or anything else that you'd like to uh to say to to uh, put a bow on uh the discussion today well yeah i guess there's one thing that i just think is it's very interesting um because we're talking about sight and i just want to kind of throw this bizarre sight idea um in and you can keep this um or or let it go but we are training like self-driving cars. They're typically trained in a virtual world first. So they're put in a virtual simulation that looks like a city and they're trained to, um, you know, stay on the right side of the yellow line and stop when they see the red light. And then, uh, and then only after it's done that training, does it go into the real world. And then we're doing the same with um, robots do that. But humans can do that too. So these virtual worlds can be places where you get trained um, and you can train and practice and experiment with life in certain ways before you go to the real world that has a, a bigger impact. Anyway, I, I just think that's an, an interesting um, site concept. Oh, it's very interesting. I really appreciate you, you sharing. Um, Professor Elizabeth uh, Strickler, been my pleasure to chat with you today. Your passion for art, for NFTs, uh, your love for the city of Atlanta, uh, for Georgia State University, and also community service is uh, admirable. And uh, Atlanta and Georgia State University are very lucky uh, to, to have you. I really enjoyed talking with you today and your answers were amazing. And I, I hope that the viewers and listeners to this podcast really appreciate your words of wisdom as much as I, I, I have. So thank you. And I really appreciate your time today. Thank you, Joel. I really, um, you, I can see that you are a philosophy major. I really like the depth at which you're thinking about sight and, you know, you've given me some new ideas and things to think about as well. So uh, I really appreciate it and I'm happy to talk about this stuff anytime. I'm I'm insanely passionate about all this stuff. <laughs> yes, you are. And the world, the world, uh, the world needs that. So again, uh, appreciate it. Mm -hmm.